the weekly portion. This week's portion is known as this week's, this week's portion is known as Pinhas. Pinhas in Hebrew deals with uh, three main uh, themes. Deals with Pinhas. Pinhas was the son of Elazar, the son of uh, Haron. It deals with the blessing, uh, the aftermath of a, of a certain action that Pinchas did, uh, and the blessing that he received. It also deals with the uh, a census, a census figures for all of the tribes of Israel, a listing of all of the different tribes and all of the different uh, uh, sub-tribes or families, major families in the tribes. And some of these families became uh, nations and peoples and history in their own right. Also, lists the Levites separately. Uh, speaks of the daughters of Zelophehad, uh, women's rights, the first ever case of women's rights, um, one could say. And uh, then it gives us uh, a list of all of the different uh, feast days and the sacrifices accompanying those feast days. The first section concerns Pinchas. What happened with Pinchas? Pinchas is a continuation from the previous week's portion in which the king of Moab, the king of Moab named Balak, he hired Bilam from uh, the Euphrates, from a city on the Euphrates, Petor. He hired Bilam to come and curse Israel. Every time that Bilam attempted to curse Israel, he blessed him. And so very important blessings came upon Israel as a result of this. Bilam had wanted to curse Israel, as we see, as it is implied by the, by the uh, verses themselves and also according to the, uh, tra- the uh, traditions received by the sages. So he had wanted to curse Israel and he was angry and uh, disappointed, one could say, at not having succeeded in doing so. And he saw that the reason why he had not been successful was because God loves Israel. God wanted to protect them and did not want to curse them. So therefore, he uh, conceived of a plan to cause the children of Israel to be uh, divorced, or one could say separated from the God of Israel. And he persuaded the kings of Moab and Midian to prostitute their daughters to their women folk, to, give the, to, to get their women folk to go out and seduce the men of Israel, and in the course of that sexual seduction to also induce them to worship Peor, who was the, um, the uh, idolatry that they practiced, uh, possibly a form of the worship of Baal. And this is what they did, and they began to do so, and God commanded Moses to kill the people, those amongst the leadership who were worshipping, who had been worshipping idols because of this, and Moses did so, and Moses did so, he killed them, and this was in order that the anger of God should be turned away from Israel. But at that moment, or at that same time, a leading prince from the tribe of Simeon, took a princess from Midian and openly, in public view, or in a way at least that did not leave any question of ambiguity, had intercourse with, uh, they had intercourse, the the princess of Midian and uh, the prince of Simeon. And the people were nonplussed, they did not know what to do, they were weeping, at the gate of the tent of assembly and disaster was liable to come upon the Israelites. Pinhas took a spear and went in and killed both of them. And as a result of this, he averted a disaster that could have come upon all of the congregation, as we learn later. And so Pinhas was blessed. He received a blessing. And the blessing is given. So we find in Numbers uh, chapter 25, beginning from verse 11, Pinchas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, hath just turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. I give unto him my covenant of peace. And he shall have it and his seed after him. 
The covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Remember that uh, Pinhas was the son of the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron. He was a priest in his own right, but as if to say this was confirmed to him, his priesthood, and it was given unto him as an everlasting covenant. Because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. After that, following that, we have uh, the commandment given to Moses to make a census to number the children of Israel, which he proceeded according to their tribes, which he proceeded to do. And in the course of this numbering, he also lists the tribal clans and families within the tribes. And these are, names are important because, as we have shown in our book, The Tribes, uh, very often these names are important and we can trace different uh, tribal groups through them and we find them. And these names often became the names of uh, national entities who were important in history and were important in the city, in areas of Western Europe amongst which they settled and through which we may tentatively identify certain areas as having belonged to specific tribes. So here... Is, uh, is this list given very quickly and it's worth listening to because it's important. So he says, the elders of Israel, beginning in chapter 26 of verse 5, Reuben, the elders of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanoch, the family of the Hanukites, the Pelot, the family of the Pelowites, heads on the family of the Hetzanites, Kami, the family of the Karmites, Goes on, the sons of Pabal, Eliyah, the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, Dadan, Babi, Ram, the sons of Simeon, after their families, Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, Yamin, the family of the Yemenites, Yachin, the family of the Yachinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zahites, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulites, the children of Gad, Hagi, the family of the Haggites, Shuni, the family of the Shunites, Siphon, the family of the Ziphonites, Osni, the family of the Osnites, Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arod, the family of the Arodites, of Ari, Areli, the family of the Arelites, sons of Judah, Eb, and Onan, and, the, and also Eshedah, the family of the Shedanites, Paris, the family of the Pharites, Sites, Zerach, the family of the Zahites, the family of Ferris, we have Hetzon, the family of the Hetzonites, Hamul, the family of the Hamulites. Issachar, the total of the family of the Tolaites, Fua, the family of the Punites, the Puni, Yashub, the family of the Yeshubites, of Shimon, the family of the Shimonites, sons of Zebulon, Sarah, the family of the Sardites, Elon, the family of the Elonites, or Adonites, Yahali El, the family of the Yali Elites, uh, Joseph, after their families, Manasseh and Ephraim, the sons of Manasseh and Mechir, the family of the Mechirites, and Mechir begat Gilead, of Gilead, the family of the Gileadites, the sons of Gilead, Yeezah, the family of the Yeezerites, Hedek, the family of the Hedekites, Asriel, the family of the Asrielites, Shehem, the family of the Shehemites, Shemiada, the family of the Shemiadites, Ephah, the family of the Hepherites, Zelophehad, the son of Hepha, had no sons but daughters in the family of the, the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mahala, Benoa, Hagla, Milka, Batitsa. Family of sons of Ephraim, of the family Shutualak, the family of the Shutulites, Shutalites, Becker, the family of the Beckerites, Tahan, the family of the Tahanites, and so on. The family of Benjamin, the family of the Benjamin, Benjaminites, of Ashba, the family of the Ashbelites, Ahiram, the family of Ahiramites, Shufam, the family of Shufamites, Hufan, the family of the Hufamites, Bela, the family of Ard, Ard, Benayaman, Ardites, Naamites, uh, sons of Dan, Shuham, and uh, the family of children of Asher, Yimna, Yeshui, Beria, so the sons of Berea, Heber, the family of the Heberites, Malkiel, the family of the Malkielites, was the family of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. Sons of Naphtali, Yaziel, from the Yazielites, Guni, the family of the Gunites, Yezerites, Shilem, and uh, these are the names that are listed. You also have the names 
later of the Levites. The difference between the Levites and the other tribes is that the Levites did not inherit, in, did not receive inheritance in the land. They were to be scattered amongst the other nations. The other tribes were listed and numbered from the uh, age of 20 upwards. The, the uh, children of the tri- tribe of Levi were numbered from the tribe of one month upwards. And uh, Levi was separate. Uh, Levi was uh, to be scattered amongst other tribes and to receive tithes and offerings from the other tribes, and that was to be his main source of income, and he was to teach the, the Torah, to teach the law of God and to study it and to uphold it. And in our time, the rabbinim and the, the uh, rabbinical students, they take the place of the tribe of Levi. Very often amongst the leading rabbinical authorities, we find people descended from Levi. This tradition is still continuing even today. Statistically, it may be shown amongst great books, great authoritative works, in which the authors are very often named Levi, very much in a much greater proportion to their relative uh, strength in the general Jewish population. We also have the union of the daughters of Zelophehad from the from the uh, tribe of Manasseh. Zelophehad did not have any sons. He had daughters. Their names are given. Uh, Zelophehad was the son of Hepha, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the sons of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mahalan, Noah, Hogla, Milcha, and Titsa. And they had a problem because of their, they uh, had to inherit their father's what, inheritance. And if they would marry people from other tribes, then this inheritance would uh, depart from the tribe. So Moses decided for that specific generation, not for an everlasting ruling, but for that specific time, that these daughters should marry their cousins in order that the tribal inheritance should remain within the tribe. But uh, the general principle here is that when someone with a problem arises, when someone has a problem, something is troubling you, you have a conundrum or something, an obstacle that is preventing you from progressing, preventing your, your, your functioning, you should speak it out, tell the authorities concerned about it, tell whoever can help you what the problem is, and they should be prepared to listen to you and to find a solution, because very often solutions can be found, and that is what everyone is here for, to find solutions and make life easier for each and every one of us. After that, Moses is told that he is about to pass away. He is about to pass away, and Joshua, Yehoshua in Hebrew, would uh, take his place as a leader of the people, and he is commanded by God Almighty to give up something of his spirit, of his leadership, of his ability to uh, guide the people, to give it, to pass it over to Yehoshua, as it says. As it says, The Lord said unto Moses, Take Yehoshua, the son of Nun, a man of whom it is, in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand upon him, and set him before Elazar, the priests and before the congregation and give him a charge in their sight and you shall put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient and he shall stand before Eleazar the priest and he shall ask counsel of him for him at the judgment of war and before the Lord as which shall they go out and that is where they shall come in but then all the children of Israel with him even all the congregation so uh, that is what is commanded. We have a principle that through reading the Torah, the, the whatever is being read at the time of the uh, weekly portion is if something connected to that in the spiritual realm is aroused and we may tune into it, lock into it as if to say it's worth knowing. And uh, this is uh, all connected with the, the Torah of the Lost Ten Tribes that we believe that the Lost Ten Tribes are amongst Western nations and they should be aware of it and they should internalize the message and uh, learn the Bible and try and draw close to the to God Almighty. After that, we have uh, chapters 28 and 29, the Book of Numbers, which lists the, the uh, sacrifices and uh, of the year and the festivals of the year and each, the different sacrifices that will be held on each, uh, on each festival. 
and uh, this is worth knowing and studying for those who, who have to know something about it. And there are people today who are preparing themselves for the rebuilding of the temple. And uh, we believe, it says in the Bible, in Ezekiel and other places, that the temple will be rebuilt. So this knowledge is pertinent, and uh, not only that, but the spiritual and figurative and symbolic meaning uh, that the sacrifices held for us is also always pertinent. The word sacrifice in Hebrew is korban, korban in Hebrew is from the root karev, karev, and uh, meaning to draw closer, to come closer, to bring closer, and also to offer up, and through the sacrifices we both, different sacrifices have uh, different effects, but through the sacrifices we may gain atonement for our sins, and we all, all may, also may draw closer to God Almighty. The Lord God of Israel bless you all, thank you.